Ready? Come ye faithful, raise the strain of triumph and gladness. God hath brought his Israel into joy from sadness. Loose from Pharaoh's bitter yoke, Jacob's sons and daughters. Let them with unmoistened foot through the Red Sea waters. Tis the spring of souls today, Christ hath burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death, as a sun hath risen. All the winter of our sins, long and dark is flying, from his light to whom we give, Lord, and praise undying. Now the queen of seasons bright with the day of splendor, with the royal feast of feasts, comes this joy to render. Comes to glad Jerusalem, who with true affection welcomes in unwearied strains Jesus' resurrection. Neither might the gates of death, nor the tomb's dark portal, nor the watchers, nor the seal, hold thee as a mortal. But today amidst thine own thou discern bestowing, that thy peace which evermore passeth human knowing. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Lord is with us all. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. 
So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 116. Love the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. 
Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning on the road within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? At same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Were not our hearts burning within us? Last Sunday, we heard John's account of Easter evening. Jesus appearing to the disciples huddled in the locked room. Today, we have Luke's version of what happened on the evening of Easter. And as John is the only gospel that talks about Thomas wanting to see the wounds of Jesus, Luke is the only gospel that mentions this story of what happens on the road to Emmaus. This is an iconic story because we all experience it. The last time I preached on this gospel was when Harry chose it for Father Wayne's funeral. We had hoped. This story is iconic because it speaks to us. It is relevant to so much of our lived experience. Here in this pandemic, we are living it again. The two disciples, when asked by the stranger why they are so downcast, begin by telling the facts, like a news report of the arrest and death of Jesus. Like our news relating the number of COVID-19 infections and deaths that appear on the screen constantly. And the facts are terrible. Jesus, an innocent man, was tortured and crucified then. Now, thousands of people around the world have died. The world economy is a mess. We are sequestered in our homes. But after the facts, the disciples reveal what is at the heart of their sorrow. They're being near despair. They reveal the heart of their sorrow when they say, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. But we had hoped. But we thought he was going to save us all. And with them we too say, we had hoped we were immune to this kind of thing. We thought we were safe in the U.S. We thought that our retirement was secure with our 401k investments. We thought this virus would have passed by now. We had hoped it was just like the flu. It is not the events that make us sad, perhaps. Not the events themselves that lead us to the edge of despair but our unmet expectations, our dashed hopes. 
but we had hoped that he was the one. Many of us had hoped to celebrate Easter in church, with the choir and organ making beautiful music, or to spend spring break on a nice vacation. More seriously, I had hoped that our response to the suffering all around us would be to find ways to help, to sacrifice our own wants for someone else's needs. We're told that after the two disciples have had the chance to tell the story of their disappointment, their dashed hopes, their distress, the stranger then proceeds to say, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. In other words, you have it all wrong. You're looking at this the wrong way. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. But their eyes still weren't opened. Very likely, I think they might have been a little put off. They were expressing their feelings to this stranger. And he responds with biblical exegesis. As far as this gospel passage tells us, nothing has changed for these two disciples up to this point. We've all been here, too. We all have feelings about the stay at home policies. About being told where we can and cannot go. About how many deaths are acceptable to save the economy. And others who feel differently may offer evidence of all kinds to sway us, some more factual than others. But arguing facts does not seem very helpful. It takes more than facts to change feelings. Our heads are not really very well connected to our hearts. And so the two disciples, after hearing about the experience of the women at the tomb before they left Jerusalem, and after being given from this stranger an explanation of the scriptures that would be the envy of everyone in the Bible study group, these two disciples are still looking sad. They do not recognize the stranger. He doesn't meet their expectations. He is not what or who they were looking for. It's not until they arrive home and open themselves, inviting the stranger into their home, that change begins. Stay with us. It is nearly evening. They've gone from hearing about from others to learning about through the scriptures to sharing their home and heart with this stranger, trusting the stranger. That's what inviting someone to dinner is about, establishing and celebrating communion born of trust. And in that breaking of the bread, they are changed. Then they recognize for themselves that Jesus is alive. They know for themselves not because of what others have told them and not because of what was in the scriptures, but because they have experienced it for themselves. And the moment passes. He vanished from their sight, but they still knew. Were not our hearts burning within us? They knew in their hearts I think we often look at this gospel and ask ourselves what we have to do to have our hearts burn within us. What can we do? How can we have an experience of God that will move us in this way? Remember, this is Luke's gospel, the gospel of things reversed. So I think we have to reverse this also. Instead of asking, how can we have such an experience of God? We need to ask ourselves, when was my heart burning within me? 
Where has my heart been moved? We must ask those questions and then recognize that those are the moments when the risen Christ has entered into the locked room of our hearts. Those are the moments when the risen Christ has been accompanying us on our journey. The facts and figures may not move us beyond despair, but seeing the faces, hearing the voices of those who are holding the hands of those who are dying because there's nothing else they can do. Hearing about the people of New York City going outside every evening at seven o'clock to clap their hands and honk their horns in appreciation for the first responders and medical teams and all those essential workers. Seeing folks celebrating when someone is able to stand with a walker and leave the hospital after recovering. Remembering those we have loved so deeply and who are now beyond our sight. These things all move our souls. These make our hearts burn within us. When your heart is moved at the sight of a sunrise or a night sky full of stars, at the sound of singing or the fall of tears, the risen Christ is present. And when your heart so moved leads you to be the stranger walking along someone who is near despair, when you are moved to get someone what they need, even if it means sacrificing what you want, the risen Christ is present there too, through you. Last Sunday, John's gospel invited us to recognize the risen one by his wounds and by ours. Today, Luke asks us to recognize Jesus, the stranger, present with us in our disappointment and grief and despair and fear and present in those walking the road with us now. In these days when we cannot celebrate the literal breaking of the bread together, let us not fail to recognize Christ's presence whenever and wherever our hearts are burning within us. And let us not fail to remember that we are to be Christ's present for one another. Amen. Let us pray, profess together our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, either silently or aloud. Eternal and loving creator, we give thanks this morning for the rebirth of nature, for our promise of resurrection for all your people. Open your heart as we lift our voices to you saying, hear our prayer. For those who suffer for your sake and for those who do harm in your name, for your church in every land, especially the parish, as it searches for a new rector, this diocese and Wayne, our bishop, the Emmaus community, St. John's Elma, and the Linwood home. We lift our voices in hope. Hear our prayer. We marvel at the power of thunder and lightning, white caps, and swift flowing streams. May the leaders of the nations bow to your mighty arm in all of your creation. For nations in turmoil, grief or uncertainty, especially this nation, as we struggle to live with the pandemic. For refugees, undocumented immigrants, and victims of human trafficking. For those who are homeless or unemployed. We lift our voices in hope. Hear our prayer. We draw strength from Michigan, this land that you have given us. May we walk gently through the fields and forests and besides its lakes, great and small. For all who suffer from the violence of this ever-changing earth, especially those from tornadoes and flooding. For those whose livelihood depends on good weather. We lift our voices in hope. Hear our prayer. We delight in the flowers of the field and the birds in the air. May we trust that you will give us all that we need. For our homebound parishioners, and for those on the prayer group list, especially the Linwood Home Healing from the Coronavirus, Mooney, Gabriel, and Mary Lou, and for all those that we name. We lift our voices in hope, hear our prayer. In those fertile days of summer, we tend the graves of those who have gone before us. Comfort us with your promise of life in your eternal garden. For Richard, who died last week, and for Sandy and her family, who grieve his loss. For those who have died from the coronavirus, for those who have died from the hatred and neglect of others, and for those who have died to serve or protect others. We lift our voices in hope, hear our prayer. Eternal and loving creator, You hold in your hands flower, towering dunes, fertile fields, freighters, and sailboats navigating the Great Lakes. Let us bow down before you and bend our knees with thanks for the riches you have bestowed upon us. And with hope that we may use them wisely for the sustenance of all of our people. 
In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to St. John's Online to our celebration and prayer this morning on this third Sunday of Easter. Thank you for joining us, for being present, for praying together. There aren't any particular announcements except that our plan is to be here every Sunday morning from now until when we are able to be safely in church and probably even beyond then for those who still feel like they will want to stay at home even if we are permitted to be back in church. Same time and same place will be here. Every e every week on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, we're having um, conversation together, virtual coffee hour. Um, if you'd like to be part of that, um, please let Ulana or Alice or me know, make a comment here um, on Facebook or after the YouTube video. Um, we'll try to make sure that you have the link to participate in that Zoom meeting. You can also just call in by telephone. Um, this service will be up on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is St. John's Digital Church. There you will find um, the services that we've had so far since we have had to go online. But you'll also find some recently discovered old videos that we, that we uh, found in, in other channels. Um, the choir, um, even a recording of the St. John's Boy Choir from years ago. So enjoy those. This morning after our service, about 11 o'clock, we will have um, coffee hour together on Zoom. Uh, you've got the link to that um, that came. If you don't have it, please um, respond to uh, in the chat section, and we'll make sure that you get, um, you get the link for that coffee hour. It is good for us to stay connected. Um, again, while we can't break bread together physically, we can continue to open our hearts to share with one another ourselves and our hopes and our fears and our dreams um, to be with one another as best we can in this time. Let's gather all the prayers that we hold in our hearts, all the prayer we have spoken today and what remains silent. Let us gather all that into one as we pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with your word and your presence within us. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God of life, you give us life and hope. Be with us in the chaos of this time. Calm our fears. Be the light for our path and strengthen our trust in your promise never to leave or forsake us. We pray this through Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit,
who creates, redeems, and sanctifies, be upon us and those we love and those for whom we pray this day and always. Amen. Let us shelter in peace to love and serve God and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thank you.